veil is over men's eyes that are intelligent, but they can't find the way because it's hid by their own pride or their own knowledge and everything else. They think we can find a way. They thought they could find a way in Babel. They said, we'll build a tower and take man back to heaven. Friend, let me tell you, I don't have to lift a brick to get to heaven. Praise God, I don't have to carry mortar. I don't have to sweat. I get to heaven because Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross shed his blood. Oh, he was buried on the third day. He arose and praise God this morning. I know the way to heaven because I'm following Jesus and Jesus knows the way and not only does he know the way, he is the way that's life everlasting. It reminds me of this man a story I heard about a dog. It came to his house. It was kind of pitiful like. They fed him and took good care of him for a while and got him back to health. And that dog had fell in love with that house and where he lived. That dog wouldn't leave. But they couldn't keep him where they lived. And so the man said, I know what I'll do. I'll load him up and back where I'm from, out in the country, I can take him back in those woods and places and he'll live off the land and rabbits and so on and finally somebody will find him a good home. That man loaded him up one day, took him way out in the country and left him, let him out. That man come back home, drove up in the driveway. There's the dog standing on the porch wagging his tail. He beat him home. And that dog knew more about the way than he did. He said, well, I know what, another place. It's even worse than that one. He can't find his way back from it. I know for a fact he'll never find. He said, and he went out, took him out, left him, got back home, went in. Then he didn't see him anywhere. And he asked his wife something about the dog. She said, he's out back laying under the tree. Beat him back. He said, all right, that does it. He said, I'm going to take that dog to a place where that I know he cannot find the way back. He took that dog out into the deepest part of the woods, in the ravine, ravines in the country, and every thick undergrowth, everything you could think of. They about three hours went by, and his, and his wife hadn't heard from him. But about three hours, the phone rang. The man called his wife, and, and, and she answered the phone, and said, John, said that dog is here on the porch. He said, I figured that. said, what I'm calling about, I want you to hand him the phone and tell me how to get back. So, so sometimes you can find God in the strangest places. I heard about a pilot that was flying 35 or 40,000 feet in the air. Nothing up there on the outside. All at once there was a leaflet that uh, went up on uh, flew right on the windshield, right in front of him. And those two words were on that leaflet. It said, Jesus saves. It shocked that pilot out of his wits. There was no way that a piece of paper could get there, but it did. And when he saw that paper, he thought about how he was raised. He thought about how he knew about God, but he never did anything about it. That pilot gave his heart to God up there in the 40,000 feet in the air. And so if he had died, he'd have went right on to heaven. He'd have been 40,000 feet closer than if he'd been here on earth. But if he got back to earth, thank God he's still close to heaven because Jesus Christ lives with him and he is the way, he is the truth, and he he is the light, and he is, he is everything. Now, the truth is in there also. There's a thousand ways that men can tell you, yea, 10,000. But if the truth is not in it, then how do I know the truth, preacher, if somebody preaches you any other way except through the blood of Jesus Christ and the cross of Calvary? Paul said, I glory in nothing save the cross. Hallelujah. I wouldn't preach you anything this morning. I'm not promoting a denomination. When I was in the military, I was with all kinds of religions. And they'd get their Bible studies out in their little folders and lay them out. One of them, they worshiped the day. And if you didn't worship on that day, you didn't, you didn't know God. But not a one of them that I came across except somebody who really had Jesus Christ ever told me about a personal experience with God. 
That's how I knew the difference. When somebody tries to give you a, a, a bill of goods, how to get to heaven, and it don't have in there the fact that you can have a personal, a, a personal touch with heaven and you can talk to God and he can talk to you through his spirit, walk away from it, run away from it, get away from it, because you must have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ in order to be saved. Church membership won't do it. Turning over a new leaf won't do it. Keeping the kind to keep the commandments won't do it. You have to have Jesus Christ on board or you'll never find that way that goes to heaven because this veil cannot be broken except any other way and lifted except through Jesus and the name of Jesus. I've heard preachers preach a whole message and never once mention the name of Jesus. God help us that if we go to church and we go through that service and we don't mention the name Jesus somewhere, we can talk about the Lord and the old man upstairs and all that kind of stuff. I want to tell you, I cringe when I hear somebody say, the man upstairs. Listen, that's somebody living in the attic. That's somebody living upstairs. That's not my God. My God's not upstairs. My God is in heaven. My God. Who? Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. As the man preached on the other night, my God is in heaven and he deserves to have his name mentioned and that name is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And without the name of Jesus, we don't know the way to glory. Oh, hallelujah. But if you've got the name of Jesus, you don't need any other way. You don't need any additions. No, there's a lot of things that God gives us and blesses us, gifts he gives us and all that along the way. But if you receive Jesus Christ today at this altar of prayer and you rose up from here, you came with that veil and blinded, but you rose up and now I see and start shouting the glory of God and start witnessing for Jesus Christ and you died before you got to your car. You know where you'd be? You'd be in heaven with the Lord. Cut out all that stuff. Don't listen to these things. You've got to do this to get to heaven. You've got to do that and so on. Yes, if you live, you work for the Lord. I was born in 1934 on August the 16th. I didn't go plow corn. I didn't get up the next day and go fishing. There was a lot of things I didn't do. But I grew and I grew and I grew. And as I grew... There's things I learned to eat that I didn't like. I, things I had to eat because that's all I had. And so on. I didn't know how to milk a cow, but I had to learn. All of these things, God gave me blessings and so on and pleasure in life. But I didn't have that until I grew. And so when you first become saved, you're just so happy and rejoicing in the Lord and you're on cloud nine and you think that's where you're going to live as long as you're here. But God didn't save us just to sit down. If we do live and we don't go to heaven, we will have the greatest blessing we ever had in our life working for Jesus Christ. Amen. I love my job. How many